Hi, everyone. This is Jennifer Bagnashi. Thank you so much for joining in on our live. Um, I'm just waiting for more people to get on. Thank you for joining us, whoever's on right now. And I'm really excited about today because we have Monica Ford. She's been on before and she was trained under John Paul Jackson's ministries. I don't know if you remember John Paul Jackson, but John Paul Jackson was one of the few true prophets um, that we had of the 20th century, a little bit of the 21st century too. And her dream uh, interpretations are spot on and they're biblical. Um, so make sure you bring your questions uh, today as this is a live. We're going to chat a little bit and then Monica is going to share um, what she's going to teach us about how to interpret your dreams. I feel like now everybody is um, dreaming more often. I feel like every year more people are dreaming, dreaming more often, especially Muslims. I feel like Muslims are receiving more dreams from Jesus and giving their life to the Lord, which is really, really great. Um, so I'm really excited about that. Monica's going to share with us uh, the three roles and you're going to hear, you're going to want to stick around for this. So she's going to explain that there are three roles that are played uh, in a dream and there are 10 categories of dreams, 10 types of dreams that actually covers everything. So every dream you could ever imagine, nightmares, whatever, um, good dreams, bad dreams, lucid, whatever. She covers them all. So you're going to want to stay for that uh, as well. Uh, and I want to wait a little bit longer. Let's see what you guys are saying. I didn't see this on here. All right, let's see. Um, I'm going to do a few shout outs because I'm starting to like this live thing. Before I was a little nervous, but now it's kind of cool. Good morning. This is from Carl. Carl, where are you? Because it's five o'clock p.m. where I am in Colorado. Um, let's see. Santa, please pray for my sister. Um, she removed her mom. For okay, we'll pray for you, Santa. Uh, you have a really cool name. Hi, Jennifer um, from Sharon. Hi, Maria. Uh, hello from Lakeland. Plano, Texas, J. It is, is buffering. Guys, is this buffering? I'm sorry, I'm getting um, notifications for my tech that is buffering. Is it clear for you? Just let me know. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a yes or no, or just let me know if it's buffering or not. Well, I haven't seen anything so far. No, okay, thank you. Thank you, Maria. All right. Um, a few more shout outs. I'm really excited. This is kind of fun. All right. Let's see. Maria, thank you. You're from Lake Lynn. You're the one who let us know that we're good. Um, Jay from Plano, Texas. Hi, Karis. Shalom from Waco, Texas. Uh, it's your first live as well, Jay. Awesome. Martha, hello from Namibia. Namibia. Is that Africa? Namibia. Did I say that right? <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. Um, Ol Olufima, I'm really glad you did make it live this time. I know before a lot of people missed it. Um, you guys, I try to make the time available for a lot of people so they're not in bed or it's not too late. Seven o'clock Eastern Standard Time, four o'clock Pacific. I feel like it's good. And hopefully we're good over in the UK and Africa and all that stuff. All right. Um, Annalise. Hi, Annalise. Good evening. Um, Pittsburgh. I am Tiffany Christ. Okay, cool name. Elena. Good evening. Blessings from Sacramento, California. Rosalie. All right. Martina. Martina Holmes. Good evening. From, we have a lot of Californians. One thing about Californians I've learned, excuse me, is that even though there's a lot of crazy political things going on over there in California, I've met the most holiest, <laughs> righteous Christians in California, believe it or not. It's something about California. I don't know. Maybe where sin abides, the Lord's people rises up. If you guys find out too, let me know. But I'd notice I've noticed the most powerful Christians out of California. Uh, let's see. Darlene West. Hello. Uh, Sharon. I said you. Not buffering. Okay. Thank you, Sharon. Darlene. Hi. From South Carolina. All right. Good evening from Indiana. Hello from Windeck, Namibia. Okay. We went over that already. <laughs> I hope I said that right. And we're going to start in a few seconds. Let me just... Okay, Elena. Hi, Elena. And Rosalie. Noel. Hi, Noel from Georgia. Claire Saquita. Sha Sharquita. 
I like that. Okay, it's clear. Thank you. Good evening from Norway. My sister loves Norway. She thinks she's going to go there one day. I believe she will. She says, get off her butt and get there. Um, all right, let's see. Guys, we're going to start in a minute, I promise. I just want to let you guys know that I really appreciate you all being here right now. Hello from South Carolina, babe in Christ. Oh, that's hilarious. Laura. Hi, Laura. Burtis. Um, Aleda from California. Kel from uh, Louisiana. Mary from Texas. Texans. He all y'all. I love Texas. Um, are you able to sow seeds through Super Chat? Um, I'm not sure. If you want to sow a seed, you could head to the website, um, deepbeliever.com. Uh, and you just go through there. It's an option to donate. Um, Yolanda Rico, hi. Um, and now some Karis. Hadassah Yeshua. I like that. Okay. Uh, Christy, Sharon, Martha. Okay. Hey, Jennifer. Okay, guys, look at this. This is not how you spell my name. Hey, Jennifer Bagnush. Just okay. My name is. Jennifer Banyaski, that's the pure Italian way. But because once my husband's family moved to America, they changed it to Bagnashi, but the original name is Banyaski. So call me what you want. Um, but I just thought that was hilarious. Okay. Um, let's see. Hello from Texas. We're going to start in a minute, I promise, guys. Uh, Davida. Hi, Angie. Hi, Kimberly. Hi, Orkley. Array. Kat. You guys are great. Kyle Woods. Can't wait for the ball. Can't wait to see you there. I'm excited. Matter of fact, we're about to play the promotion in a minute, but um, please tell your sister to come to Norway. Look, if I tell her this, she probably would. Invite her. Give her as much invites as possible. She dreams about it every day. She even learned the language. All right. Um, beautiful last name. Thank you, Mary. T, hi, and Clara. All right. So there are still, still spots available for the ball. I'm really excited. We have a special guest. I haven't revealed who is going to be performing yet? Because it's going to be a surprise. I'm really happy. I mean, you're going to find out in a few weeks, but we're just getting everything all squared away. But there's two performers who are gone to be there who I am super excited about, like super excited. I know that they have the glory of God on them. Um, they're amazing. If you want to be changed, if you want to come and feel the glory of God, if you want to come one way and leave another in a good way, I'm telling you, this is the time to come April 1st through 3rd of next year, 2024. It's a royal ball for Jesus. I've been told it's never been done before. I figure if the Lord's going to throw us a big banquet in heaven, why not do it for him here? And it's all for him. And the price is only $275 plus taxes and fees. Now, I know before I said $250 by accident. I'm sorry. And last time I did say it was 2023. I'm sorry. I'm not time, time traveling either. But um, I just want to invite everyone who can make it, make it your admission into the ball is your room. That's it. So you only pay two nights for your room. If you want to stay longer, that's fine. But it's $275 per night plus taxes and fees, which isn't too much. And that's it. That gets you into the workshops, that gets you to the ball, that covers your food. I mean, we're making it so we're making it available to almost anyone who wants to come. We're not trying to make high ticket prices and all these commissions. No, we just want you to come and celebrate Jesus with us. It's all about him, nothing about us. You guys are going to have a great time. Um, the hotel, the resort is gorgeous, very gorgeous. Um, I know there were some people who said this is elite. I mean, I don't, $200 is not elite, but if you want to call it elite, no problem. You can call it elite all you want, but maybe we're elite in the kingdom because we are God's children, you know, children of the King. So that's awesome. But please come out. I'm going to play the promotion right now. Um, rooms are filling up. Um, we only have, I think about a hundred rooms left. So we're doing really good. Um, so if you want to book, book up now, we have to book up a lot of rooms. Um, so we do have 100 left. Um, so please be there. We're really excited. I would love to meet you all. We're having a lot of people who've been on the show. Um, so they'll be there. You can meet them and we all can fellowship. This is a family. So we're a family, right? Um, very positive, very loving. We just love God and love people. And that's what we're going to come together and do. So uh, with that being said, let's look at this promotion. All right. Ever wanted the experience of attending a genuine royal ball? Well, here's your chance. 
join Deep Believer Ministries for one of the grandest, most powerful events ever to solely honor King Jesus with a night with the King at the Broadmoor. Enjoy the magnificent grounds, accommodations, and fine dining of the five-star, five-diamond, exquisite Broadmoor Resort in Colorado Springs, Colorado. A Night with the King at the Broadmoor is a very royal, very formal three days, two nights conference that will provide you with hands-on training for true, Christian, supernatural living by renowned teachers and evangelists. This includes training in multiple areas of healing, deliverance, spiritual warfare, how to walk out the abundant Christian life, as well as how to obtain success in finances God's way. Then, for the royal evening, soak in the ambiance of white tablecloth gourmet dining, live brass and stringed instruments, acclaimed Christian singers and worshipers. And what's a royal ball without ballroom dancing? Don't know how? Complimentary ballroom dance lessons are included. A night with the King at the Broadmoor will be a night of complete honor and reverence to our King Jesus and will be like nothing you've possibly ever experienced. We hope to see you there for this stately, eventful night. All right. So, guys, if you can make it, make it. Um, we have about less than two months to go for open registration um and it's as rooms are available um and we would love to see you there like i said we the room the prices for this place usually seven hundred dollars and they said they love what we're doing so much they dropped it down to 275 dollars so everyone could attend um so please be there also i would like to introduce monica fort monica fort as i said earlier she was on here last year and she really has the gift of dream interpretation. She was always a dreamer. The Lord had given her prophetic dreams and dream interpretations. And then uh, years ago, she actually joined John Paul Jackson's ministry. Remember, John Paul Jackson was one of the few true prophets of our day. And he opened a school and she learned even more under him. Uh, and this is her book. It's called The Mysteries of the Language of Dreams. It's probably backwards. I'm sorry if it is, but I would like everyone to welcome Monica Fort. Monica, thanks so much for being on. Hi, so glad to be here. Well, thank you so much for accepting <laughs> our um, our invitation. I said, you know what? Everybody's dreaming now. Guys, oh, mm. and also bring your questions for Monica too, because towards the end, ask away and um, she's going to answer as many questions as possible. Um, and we're going to ask, she's actually going to interpret a few dreams, but she asked that you make it short and concise oh. <laughs> just a little short every little guys yeah and <laughs> concise because um you know dreams can take a lot and then some mm -hmm. people have like dreams where it's a few pages long and it's hard like to get novel. yeah <laughs> exactly but i mean she's pretty spot on so yeah. um bring your dreams along don't act like you didn't you haven't had dreams because i know you had dreams mm -hmm. guys all right um so monica yeah so mm -hmm. i mean when i spoke to you earlier um mm -hmm. the other day you mentioned that there were, and I didn't know this, that there were three types of roles in a dream, and then there are 10 categories. So I'll give you the floor uh, so you can talk about dreams, what they are, you know, okay. um, who they're for, all that stuff. So Monica, for okay. you have the floor. Well, um, yeah, there are three roles that you can play in a dream, and there's pr probably more than 10 categories, but I kind of condensed some things into 10 categories. It'd be many different categories. You can have many different types of dreams. So uh, in my dream journal, the Mysterious Language of Dreams journal, I have the 10 categories condensed. So, but in order to uh, correctly interpret a dream, it's important that you know what role you play in the dream. Because many times I have had, um, you know, people tell me, well, I've had, I had a dream and, you know, in the dream, I'm doing such and such a thing, but I don't think the dream was about me. I think it was about my sister. And I said, well, was your sister in the dream? And this particular person said, no, she wasn't a dream. It was me. I was doing, you know, all of these things. But this sounds like something my sister would do. So I think my sister is having this problem that I'm, you know, the action she was doing in the dream was negative. 
So she, so she you had know, to blame it, her sister, right? <laughs> blame it on sis, yes. And so she didn't think it was about her. But if, you know, uh, it, it's important when you are interpreting dreams or tempting to interpret a dream is that, you know, first of all, if God is speaking to you, he's more than likely going to use you in the dream and not you as a substitute for someone else generally. Okay. So, but it's important to know what role you play in a dream. So uh, within the dream, within the dream scenario itself, you will have uh, one of three roles. So the first role you can have is the focus. So in other words, when you have a dream, the focus of the dream is the main person or the main object in the dream that the dream is about. So um, when you have uh, people in a dream, if you have more than one person in a dream, you have to first determine who is the focus of the dream? Who is the dream about? And so how we determine the focus of a dream is that if you can take the person who you think is the focus of the dream, if you take them out of the dream and the dream can still continue, then that person is the focus of the dream. So I'll give you an example. I can have a dream that my sister and I are walking down the street and all of a sudden a red ball comes rolling down the street and I pick it up and here comes a cute little kid and they reach up their hands and, you know, want me to give them a ball and I give them a ball and they skip off and me and my sister continue walking down the street and I wake up. Well, I know that I'm the focus of the dream because if you were to take me out of the dream, the dream could not continue. You know, my sister would merely just be standing there on the side of the street. And so the focus of the dream is the person or the object that will be directly impacted by the events that's taking place in the dream. So they are the star, they have the starring role, in that dream. But that's how you determine if a person, or it could be, like I said, a, a location or an object, something like that. Um, if you take that person or object out of the dream and the dream could not continue, then you know that they are the focus of the dream. So basically the focus is the main character. The main character, they have the starring role. Yes. Okay. The okay. Dream. Mm -hmm. okay. And then the second role you can play in a dream is that of the participant. So the participant would be if, you know, a, someone, a person or an object, again, in a dream, if you were to remove that person from the dream and the dream could still continue, then that person would be a participant and not the focus. So here it is, the same dream. Me and my sister walking down the street, red ball rolls to me, I pick it up, give it to the cute little kid that comes to get it. And uh, the dream goes on. So if we were to take my sister out of the dream, the dream would absolutely continue because all the action takes place with me. So then my sister would be the participant of the dream. And so the participant of a dream would be indirectly impacted by whatever the events are going on in the dream it would have an indirect impact on them. They would experience uh, some of whatever it is that's taking place in the dream. And so that's the second role. And then the third role in a dream is that of the observer. So an observer in a dream, you're just merely observing or watching what's going on. Now, an observer... You can have a dream where you're way up high and you're looking down on a scene. And so you're not in the scene, you're not in it at all, but you're looking at the events unfold in a dream. And so you would be considered an observer. Uh, another scenario would be where you're in, like say you're in a auditorium and a concert or a play is going on and you're in the crowd, you're in the crowd scene and you're you know, in part of the crowd scene and everyone is looking 
toward the stage and something is happening on the stage. It could be a play, it could be a concert, but the action is taking place on the stage. So you're in the dream, but you're focused, everybody is focused on something else. So there you would be an observer in that dream. And um, uh, another type of observer, just let my mind, it's a third type. Okay. I can't remember. But anyway. <laughs> well, you know, I wanted to ask you, so, so why is it important for people to know um, these different roles? It's extremely important to the interpretation because if I think, you know, in the example that I gave earlier about the woman who thought the dream was all about a sister, even though a sister wasn't in a dream. <laughs> so it's extremely important to know what role you play in a dream. And the observer, I wanted to say, if you have a dream like that where you're observing, watching something in the dream, um, that would be showing that you will see what takes place. So in other words, if you're dreaming about an event or something happening, you're watching the events take place in a dream, that means that those events, when they unfold in real life, won't impact you at all, but you will see or hear about those things happening. So that's the difference. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what happens if you are uh, the focus? Okay, so if you're the focus of the dream, so it just yeah. depends on what's going on, the events yeah. that are taking place. And so if you're the focus then and you don't understand your dream, then you would absolutely, I tell everybody all the time, uh -huh. is to pray and seek God if you don't have my book for yeah, the book, interpretation. <laughs> I'm seriously, guys, her book is, is an easy read. I was telling her the other day because I she gave this to me last year. Right. And I keep it next to my bed. So sometimes if I need, you know, a little, oh, you know, um, I and she has a dream book, a dream dictionary in the back where she tells you what certain things mean. Like right here it says, well, gosh, mildew. Right. What does mildew mean? What does a professional shooter mean? You know, a heavy baby, all these things. So things like that, guys. So uh, we're going to have our information at the bottom uh, when this ends, but check that out. Okay. So what does it mean? Okay. So if it's the focus, that means mm -hmm. this really has that to do means, with you. Right. It's then, all about you. And so uh -huh. you, whatever the events are taking place in a dream, uh -huh. God is showing you something. And so you need to understand what he's showing you. Now, of course, some dreams are, you know, literal, they're very straightforward. There's no need for interpretation because you know this, God speaks directly. But most dreams are highly symbolic. So uh, that's why it's so important to know the language of God when it comes to dreams and know what different symbols mean. And, and people have asked me, um, through the years, well, you know, I know you, you, you do biblical dream interpretation and, um, you follow, you know, a lot of the symbols you, you draw from the Bible and that type of thing is true. But what about, you know, we'll ask, what about things in our modern day life, you know, like, um, ovens or refrigerators or, you know, cars and things like that. And so God will use, what you know and what you're used to in your modern day life, he will use those things to speak to you in a dream. Like for instance, if you have a dream where you're cooking something in a microwave, well, of course we know there were no microwaves back in the Bible days. And so, you know, a microwave, you would, you would say to yourself, why the symbol of a microwave? When it comes to dreams, you should always ask why this and not that. Why a microwave was in, you know, why did I dream about cooking in a microwave as opposed to cooking in an oven? So in a microwave, of course, we know cooks faster than an oven. So God may be telling you in a dream, you're trying to rush things or you're, you're moving too fast or, you know, things like that, or I'm going to do a quick work in your life. So it just depends on the context of the dream. You know, so I will say too, this does not always mean that. So, you know, we can't always take one symbol and, and, and say it always means this no matter what. 
So mm -hmm. we have to always, always look at the context of the dream, what's happening in the dream. So are you saying, say like refrigerator, um, if you were to have, say, three separate dreams of a refrigerator, say within three years, one, one year, one another, one another, it doesn't always mean the same thing when it's a refrigerator. No, not, it, it doesn't have to. No, it depends no. on what's going on with the refrigerator. Uh -huh. You know, uh, who's using the refrigerator, what kind of food, if food mm -hmm. is in there, other things may be in the refrigerator. So it just depends, you know, on what's going on in the dream. What's okay, happening. So, what, mm -hmm. so what does it mean? Okay, so we went over the focus of the dream and the, obs the observer. But what about, what does it mean if you are just a participant? You're not the main character and you're not just observing, but you're a participant. What does that mean? Okay, so if you have the dream and you're the participant in the dream, and as I said, the, if you're a participant, that would mean that the events that are unfolding in the dream will have an indirect impact on you. And so if it's a negative thing that's happening in the dream, then God is showing you this so that you can pray against it. You know, many dreams that, that would be in the warning category, many dreams, you know, we have that um, uh, God will give us to warn us of, of something to come. And so he gives to us so that we can pray against it. Now, somebody asked me, um, you know, when it comes to dreams about somebody dying, you know, they've had dreams, people have had dreams where God showed them somebody close to them dying. And so they pray for the person, but the person ends up dying, actually. So what God could be doing there, he can show you things like that with, with somebody dying to pray against it, or he may just be preparing you for what's coming. Because I've had dreams like that as well, preparing wow. you for what's coming. And I know in the dream that he's preparing me for what's coming. I know the difference between the two. So that's what we have to do. Know the difference between the two. But yeah. He okay. Can. So, mm -hmm. so you just opened a can of worms. So you just <laughs> said, you know, the difference between the two. How yeah. do you decipher the difference between the two? Because I've been doing it a long time. <laughs> Comes with experience. Kind of practice people practice <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> so you know I, so it's a discerning you know when you interpret dreams you cannot do it without the spirit of the lord but you absolutely need the spirit of understanding mm. to operate you know in isaiah 11 it talks about the seven spirits of god and one of them is the spirit of understanding so in order to correctly interpret a dream, you know, you can't just guess. You have to have the, the Holy Spirit operating in a dream. So I have a good ability to hear the Lord and to see what God is saying. But that's good. OK, so and you did mention something earlier, too, where uh, you said there are some dreams that God gives you. This, this is it seems as if this is more rare that are straightforward, mm -hmm. like, OK, you know, yeah. you're going to go to the store and you're going to pick up one hundred dollars, something and it yeah. happens. OK, right. but then there's the other dreams where you have to piece it together. You have to figure out the pieces of the puzzle. So mm -hmm. how can you tell the difference between, OK, is this a literal dream or a non literal dream? You can't always tell. Oh. So in dreams like that, where, you know, going back to somebody dying in a dream, you don't know. So I always tell people, you absolutely pray against it, pray that a person's protection, you know, and so that's what you would do. But sometimes you don't, you don't know, you know, people have dreams that they um, were in a car wreck. And so... A week later, they're in a car wreck, but the dream also is speaking on a deeper level. Now, this is what we have to understand, and I teach this, but I teach this in, in higher classes. So God will speak in layers and levels with dreams. So you can have a dream that you're in a car accident, you wake up and you pray for God's protection. Week later, you're in the car accident. It actually happens and you say, oh, 
this is what I dreamt. So this is what God was showing me. But in fact, he's going deeper than that. He's showing you that your actions that you're doing in a particular area of your life are going to cause you to crash mm. spiritually. I've seen this happen with people. Mm -hmm. And so the literalness of it, God is using to speak a spiritual message to you as well. So mm -hmm. it could be a dream can have uh, an interpretation on two or three levels. It could be two or three levels deep. So, mm -hmm. so what does it mean if you have a car crash, but you're not injured, so no one's injured? Right. That would be fantastic. So what does it mean? Though? mean <laughs> you crash, uh, you crash, but you didn't get. So yeah, so that a dream like that. If I had a dream like that, I would uh, pray and I would ask the Lord. Okay, Lord, obviously I'm headed for a crash mm -hmm. in in an area in my life. I'm headed in the wrong direction. I'm doing something wrong. So show me what I'm doing wrong that would result in a crash. Because again, cars um, in ministry, in, in um, dreams can represent ministries. They can represent mm. your life journey. So this could be speaking of what you're called to do in ministry. This could be speaking of your life's journey, your spiritual journey. And so uh, I would absolutely pray and ask God, okay, what does this mean? What area of my life am I headed for a crash in? Because that's what he's showing you in the dream. Mm -hmm. That's good. And you know what? Mm -hmm. Someone asked a great question. Kaleo, this is mm -hmm. good. She asked, um, can the interpretation be similar with different cultures? Yes. And that's a biggie. You know, I've had quite a few people on YouTube. I love y'all <laughs> that have come for me in the comment <laughs> section. Come for some more and guys. <laughs> yeah. And say, you know, they'll say, well, that's not what so-and-so said about a dream. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we have to understand that we live in different cultures. We live in different countries. Mm -hmm. And so what's common in one country or culture will be different in another country or culture. So if I'm speaking to someone, they're telling me a dream and they're in it. And I've had, I've done this many times. They're in another country, they're a whole nother culture, a whole nother country. I'll ask them, okay, so what does this object mean to you? What do you all in your culture, your country do with that object, is that normal or is that rare? So when um, you have, when you encounter people of different cultures with different, you know, dreams, then you have to find out what's, you know, what's normal, what's their cultural norms in order to correctly interpret their dreams. But yes, that absolutely makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. That's a good answer and a good question. Um, okay, so here's one that. I feel like everyone wants to know this, even though I haven't seen it. I saw one person say it in a comment. What's it mean when someone sees you naked? Because I feel like that's the <laughs> that's the main thing that people yeah, always very you know, common. Yeah. Very, what does it mean? One of the most common dreams. dreams. Well, it can be a positive dream or a negative dream. It would be positive. That's gross. it could be absolutely positive. So, okay. <laughs> so it just depends on you have to pay attention. I tell people too to pay attention to how you feel mm -hmm. in the dream. Do you feel depressed? Do you feel sad? Do you feel anxious? Do you feel happy, joyful, peaceful? Yeah. Yeah. So you can have a dream that you're completely naked in public, nonetheless. Yeah. And you feel um, joy, you feel peace, you feel normal mm -hmm. in the dream. And so the positive meaning of being naked in a dream can represent transparency, that you have nothing hidden, nothing, nothing is hidden between you and the Lord. You have a you're living a life oh. of purity. Yeah. That's a good and answer. Others will see it because you're in public and others, other people look at you. Usually dreams like that, other people don't notice you know, that you're naked. It just, the whole dream is just normal. Okay. And so God could be showing that, that, you know, you have this pure um, heart with nothing hidden. But on the negative side, if you're naked in a dream and you're ashamed and you're covering up, you're like, oh, what's going on? That could mean that you feel vulnerable in a particular area of your life. You feel wide open for attack. You don't feel protected, you know? And so, 
that's what that would mean in the negative sense. But, you know, again, it it depends on the what's going on in the dream and how you feel in the Mm -hmm. dream, not how you feel when you wake up. I want to stress this, too, because a lot of times when you wake up from a dream, you can have a very disturbing dream. But when you wake up, you're terrified. Oh, that was a horrible dream. But yet within the dream, you feel peaceful, you feel joyful, even though horrible things are taking place or bad things, and you just have this peace. So you never interpret a dream based on how you feel when you wake up. You're mm. always interpreted within how you felt within the dream. That's good, Monica. Oh my gosh. Otherwise that will skew or mess wow. up the interpretation of the dream. So God could be showing you, even though you're going through tough, uh, tough times, yeah. you know, people have had dreams, they were drowning, but they were just so joyful and happy. So even though you're going through trials oh. and things like that, mm-hmm. God is giving you his peace. You're going to be okay. You're going to make it out. But when you wake up, you might say, boy, that was a disturbing dream, you know. But so you oh. always, always, you're going to interpret it according to how you felt inside of the dream. And not when you wake up. Not when wow. you wake up. Right. That's right. good food for thought. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, one person asked one thing, and then we're going to move on to categories. Okay. This is pretty funny. John Harris just asked, what does it mean to be a king in a dream? Oh, were you a king in the dream, <laughs> John Harris? <laughs> well, you know, the Bible says that we're kings and priests. Amen. So this could be speaking, I don't know the full uh, context of the dream, but this could be speaking to the kingship in you. Also, John Harris, this could be showing your leadership potential as well. Are you a leader? John. So it could be speaking to that, that God has called you to a position of leadership as well. That's good. That's good. All right. If you're a king, that means it's pretty good news. All right. So let's move on to categories. So you said that there are 10 categories of dreams. um, I have my book. Okay. (laughs) And it basically covers every type of dream you can ever imagine. Just every type of dream. Um, Yes. And Mm -hmm. let me know when you're ready and we'll get to it. Okay, I'm ready. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So what's the first type or first category, would you say, of dreams? Okay. So in the book, I have prophetic dreams. So prophetic dreams are dreams that deal with uh, word of, of knowledge, word of wisdom, or prophecy. In other words, God is showing you something to come. It tells of future events. And so uh, the types of dreams you can have while uh, that that speak of prophetic or being in the prophetic category is you're you're watching TV or you're watching a movie. And so anytime you have dreams like this, this is where God is showing you something to come. So or something that's taking place, you know, that you don't know about. So this would be considered a prophetic dream. Wait, so if you're watching a movie in a dream, that mm-hmm. means that's something. Right. If you're watching TV, you're watching a movie and, you know, you're very aware in a dream. You're watching the movie. You know what it's about. And, you know, people may be in it that, you know, or may not. God is showing you something to come mm. in the dream. Okay. You can also have dreams where you're um, looking through a window or you're looking through a doorway. This also could be speaking of God showing you something to come, looking through windows, oh. very prophetic. So uh, these types of dreams as well. You could be looking over a fence. Some people have dreams that they were looking over a fence at something. That could be speaking of something prophetic also. And many people have had dreams where you see something coming off in the distance. People have had tornado dreams, hurricane dreams, where they see them coming at a distance. So this would be considered a prophetic dream. God is showing you a tornado or it could be spiritual or natural that is coming. So these would be uh, considered prophetic dreams. So are Mm -hmm. tornadoes and dreams bad? Well, not all the time. Uh So they can have a positive meaning or negative meaning. Usually if it's a white tornado, and you know, you're, you're very aware in the dream that the tornado is white. 
it could be a tornado that God is sending to clean up some areas in a particular location mm -hmm. or in the dreamer's life. Usually, um, if it's a negative, the tornadoes will be black or dark and oh. you know, speaks of destruction. The enemy wants to come and destroy particular territories and things like that. So it just depends. So there again, you would um, you would have to pray and ask God, is this dream, if you're not sure, is this dream positive or negative? You know, what does the, the, the tornado symbol represent? Okay, you know what? Mm -hmm. So someone named Anna, she asked this question right here. Is this a prophetic dream? She asked, well, what about dreams where it's someone chasing after you? Is that yeah, prophetic I have a video. I have a video on my channel about that being chased. So um, it could be a couple of things. It could be speaking of um, fear. There's some sort of fear you have. Um, a lot of times when I've interpreted dreams like that, it spoke of a trauma or childhood trauma that the dreamer has suffered. And they always have these types of dreams where somebody is chasing or monster is chasing them. And, you know, they're running, running from the monster. So it could be that it could be a fear that the dreamer has that has come in uh, through an open door at some point in their life. It could also be speaking of demons, you know, a demonic attack. Demons are trying to attack you in the dream. They're chasing you or they're trying to cause fear in you to stop you from fulfilling mm -hmm. your God-given purpose. So um, someone's chasing you, chasing you. Now, um, somebody had a dream once that a man was chasing her, but she wasn't afraid. She was running. She said in the dream, she wasn't afraid or anything in the dream, but she was running, trying to get away from the man. Finally, the man caught up with her. She turns around, she looks at the man and the man is Jesus, and he stretches his arms out to her, Aww. and he hugs her. And so she says, oh, if I knew it was you, I wouldn't have kept running. <laughs> so that can represent running from your calling in life. Wow, somebody said running from Cookie Monster. So running silly. from Cookie Monster. Yes, <laughs> Cookie Monster dream would be a monster or a demon. Yes. <laughs> so, Don't eat that cookie. No. All right. So, yeah. so that's what that would mean. All Chase right. Difference. All right. So warning dreams. Mm -hmm. And of course, is God warning you of things to come. Mm -hmm. and, and that's so, two, right? Number two. Number two. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, number two is warning okay. dreams. And so God is warning you of something to come. And so, of course, you usually those dreams are dark. They're colorless. Um, if they have any color, the color is very dull. And so, of course, with those dreams, God is showing you urgency. You need to pray against this thing mm -hmm. from happening. Mm -hmm. All okay. right. Well, you know what? A person asked a question. Okay. Um, would this be a warning dream? Clementina? She asked, well, what does a missing child mean in a dream? Okay. That can mean a few things. So if I, of course, I don't know the whole dream, but if... Mm -hmm. Clementina, you have a dream that your um, child is missing or stolen, or you just don't know where the child is, that could represent that you have a fear of losing your child. Uh, many of these dreams, sometimes they can come from your fears, yeah. right? And so you can have a fear of losing that child. You might've lost a child or something may have transpired with the child, or you your own childhood may have had some trauma where you were separated from your mother or things like that. And so it could be coming just from a fear mm. um, or the child has a dynamic call on their life and the enemy wants to steal your child's destiny. Mm. And so, you know, when you have dreams like this, you would absolutely pray against these dreams. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So what will be another example of a warning dream? Well, I had a warning dream. I don't know if I said it the last time on your show or not. But anyway, I had, I had many a warning dream. But this one, I won't forget. I, um, my, si my sisters and I, we were traveling. This was decades ago. We were traveling to New York because we were born and raised in New York. And we had all of our children with us in a van. And so 
my sister. Did I tell this already? Yeah, but it's good. I don't, okay. if nobody heard this, this is pretty I don't cool. want to repeat myself. Okay. Well, I mean, it was only a year ago. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're all in the van. My sis, two sisters, I and my friend. And so we're taking turns driving. So uh, my friend is driving. It's like two, one or two or three in the morning. And she's driving. Everybody's asleep. I'm sitting behind her. And so I put my head back on the seat and I fall asleep. As soon as I fall asleep, I'm in a dream. In the dream, the van we're driving hits head on with another car. Another car comes, it hits us head on. The van explodes into fire and I wake up. And so I asked my friend, are you okay? Are you tired? She said, no, I'm fine. Go to sleep. So I'll go back to sleep. Immediately, I'm in the same dream. Car comes, hits us head on. Van explodes. I wake up. Are you sure you're okay? She said, I'm fine. I'm wide awake. Go to sleep. Put my head back again. The same exact dream. So this time I began to pray in the spirit. So I prayed in the spirit probably for about, probably I would say about 10 minutes or so. I can't remember. But after a while, I felt a hush or peace in my spirit. So I knew everything was okay. And so maybe five minutes later or so, we're driving on a four lane highway and we're in the second, we're in the second lane from the shoulder. This and is so, literal right now. This, this like, is not literal, in okay. not in the green. And okay. so for whatever reason, she veers over into the, the lane that's closest to the shoulder. And I don't know how many minutes after that, a car comes speeding down. Now we're going one way and the car comes speeding down in the lane she moved out of. He must have been going 120 an hour. And it was three cop cars were behind him. And so if we would have stayed in that lane for sure, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you right now. Wow. And so the enemy you know, had plans to wipe out two generations with one felt swoop. Mm. But, you know, through prayer and intercession, because God warned me in that dream, it could not happen. God broke that plan that the enemy had. So that's a, that's an example of a warning dream. Well, you know what? That shows why prayer is so important. It's oh, like important. by it. Yes. So yeah. important. You must always pray. And that's the whole reason why God speaks to us through dreams yeah. Yeah. is because he wants a relationship with us. He wants us to seek him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So here's one thing. Okay. Before you go to the next one. So this okay. is one, I feel like people have been having this for a good, I can't say 10 years. Maybe I'm just pushing it 10 years. Okay. People keep having, maybe this is a mixture between prophetic and warning dreams. Uh -huh. I keep hearing dreams of people saying they keep seeing a massive tsunami. I think um, Lioness mentioned that uh, a massive tsunami oh, coming on one of the the um, the coast. And okay. they've been saying that like a lot of people have been having the same type of dreams. What does that mean? OK, that can be literal or spiritual. It could be figuratively speaking, mm -hmm. you know, of a tsunami, you know, tsunamis are massive waves that destroy, they do mm -hmm. mass destruction, right? So um, it could be speaking literally, but it could be speaking figurative, figuratively where something is coming or it could be a, a, a large, broad, uh, many things that are coming that uh, would bring destruction. Wow. So I don't know if people, I imagine people have had this dream from different countries and things like that no this has been an american thing oh i've okay. heard it's been an east coast thing where east this is like coast. the past 10 years people keep having the same exact dream i can't say same exact yeah. but it's and they don't know each other but people all over like you'll see it online mm -hmm. you'll see youtube videos you see facebook posts i had a dream there was a tsunami on the yeah. east coast had a dream the tsunami i won't go to this coast because of that and all that yeah. So yeah. It could, it's, it's, it's a bad dream yeah. in a way. Yeah. And so you need to pray against that, but something yeah. sounds like something is coming yeah. massive, something massive that will do uh, yeah. terrible destruction. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. 
Take All right. Focus. All right, Mrs. Fort. All right. Then number three is destiny dreams. And of course, these dreams reveal your gifts and your callings in life. You may have a dream where you're um, a midwife and you're delivering babies, you know, and this would be speaking of you helping others to find their purpose in life. You might have a dream where you're up on uh, stage speaking. Now, this is a very popular dream. Many people have had dreams where they're up on a stage and they're speaking to thousands. Have you had that type of dream, Jennifer? Yes, it was great. Yeah. <laughs> I like talking to people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of people have had that dream yeah. that they're just talking to millions of people. Mm -hmm. Now, this, these types of dreams speak of, so if you have a dream, you're on a stage and you see all these people that you're talking to and you're not, many of these people who <clears throat> have these dreams are not speakers in real life or they're not preachers or teachers, but God is showing that by you affecting change or touching the life of one group, that group will touch another group and another group and another group. And it would go, what you do will affect generations. Mm. So God can be showing you generational blessings that come from your witness, you witnessing the people or, you know, encouraging people and that type of thing. So it can mean that you will one day be in front of millions of people, you know, which YouTube is one, you're on the world stage and, uh, or it could be speaking of God could be showing the many people that you will touch, they will touch people and they will touch people. So like a domino effect that you will have on people. And he's showing you that. Those are great dreams. Well, you know, it's kind of good because there's a lot of people who are living right now who, of course, they're living because they're watching it right now. Um, they're wondering, what is my destiny? I feel like I'm just here existing. So a dream like that would really bless somebody just to know, Lord, why am I here? So, okay. So a dream speaking to millions of people or thousands of people on the stage. So what are some other examples of destiny dreams? Cause I feel like a lot of people need that hope where I'm not just here breathing, existing, working. Oh, no. yeah, we all and yeah. Yeah. We all were born for purpose and destiny, but the only way to truly find that is to seek God. I've asked so many people through the years, I'll ask them, why are you here? What mm. were you born to do? Why were you born? Mm. And 95, I would say about 95% of them say, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. That's what I would like to know. Wow. So the only way for us to know that is if we seek God and then we can know broadly, like say we can know, oh, I was called to teach, you mm. know, be a teacher, you know, or be an evangelist or, you know, that type of thing but they still don't have the, the whole thing. They still, they have a little piece. You know, I feel like I was called to do this and they could be correct, but you still need to seek God for the full plan. Mm. He's the only one who can give you the full plan. So you have to seek him in order to know that. In fact, this Friday, I have a video coming out that's going to talk about dreams that reveal your calling. Mm, that's good. Okay. Perfect timing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, but you, you have to see God to know what yeah. your destiny. That's is. right. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. All yeah. right. So that was warning. No, no, no. Destiny. Okay. And that then was then destiny. destiny. Number four is healing dreams. And these are physical. It talks about physical or emotional healing. So you can have a dream that you're like, say you're sick in real life. You can have a a dream where you see yourself well and healthy. Um, God can bring emotional healing. You can have dreams where uh, uh, a weight is lifted off of you in the dream that represents depression, you know, sadness. And so these type of dreams can be speaking of healing, physical or emotional healing that's coming your way. So God can use a dream and can heal you inside of the dream. Ooh, I like that. Yes. Yes. He can do it. <laughs> so that's almost like when you say that, even though it's not a healing, that reminds me of King Solomon, how mm -hmm. he just, the Lord asked him in a dream, what do you like? Or, or, sorry. What would you, what, what would you like? 
Yeah, kind of like. And right. then he's, he said, I just want to know how to lead these people. He right. didn't, and the Lord said, because you didn't ask for riches or wealth right. or all this stuff, I'm going to give it to you. Right. And it occurred in the dream. Like every right. his whole that, trans, that whole transaction took place in a dream. Yeah. In a dream. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. In a dream. That's yeah. Great. So God speaks in a dream, but he could speak to you directly yeah. inside yeah. of the dream. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. So just so healing dreams. Then number five is spiritual warfare dreams. Many people mm -hmm. have dreams like this where you're fighting, you know, you're either um, you're either having a shootout with them, you're shooting them or you're boxing them, you know, or you're walking down the road and somebody's trying to run you over and you're running, trying to get out of the way and, you know, and this type of stuff. So that would just speak to a, a season of spiritual warfare that you're going through. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you okay. can also have a dream. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I'll just finish. I was going to say you can also have dreams involving wrestling. So some people have had dreams like this where you're wrestling with someone. So wrestling in a dream, it just depends on what's going on in a dream, but it can mean that you're wrestling with an issue in your life a negative issue in your life, you're wrestling, you're mm -hmm. trying to uh, defeat it, this issue. And God is showing you that because he wants to step in and bring deliverance in that area. It could represent also a demonic spirit that you're wrestling with. You know, in Ephesians 6, Paul said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. So, and the rules of the darkness of this world. So uh, those type of dreams are a little bit different from spiritual, your standard spiritual warfare dreams where you're shooting or fist fighting and that type of thing. So mm -hmm. would a rat dream, because mm -hmm. Syl Williams, Syl Williams mm -hmm. just asked, well, what about rat dreams? Is that a spiritual warfare dream or? No, it's not rat. Mm -hmm. So it depends on what the rat is doing in the dream, mm -hmm. but rat dreams are never good. <laughs> okay. rats, mice and rats in dreams tend to represent sin in a dream. Oh, it represents, right. you know, garbage. If you have a dream where you come across smelly garbage and things like that, this will represent sin mm. or, or unclean spirits, things like that. And so uh, if you have mice infestation in your house or a rat that's running through your house, this would represent a sin issue. They got, they've gained entrance into your home or into your life by way of an open door. Wow. So, you know, there's a hole in your house somewhere. Wow. And they got in it. So uh, they would, that would represent a huge sin issue if it's a big old rat. And so you would need to pray, Lord, what does this rat represent? What issue are you showing me in this dream? Mm -hmm. Okay. You know what? Speaking of rats, how about snakes? Because this is a common one. Um, okay. Very common. Jennifer Shaw just asked about snakes. Is are snakes ever good in dreams? Well, it can be. It um, just depends. So the only time a snake can be good in a dream, you know, and we know uh, the snake symbol in the Bible was a positive image because mm -hmm. it represent healing. You know, when Moses they put the snake on the stick and they held it up, mm -hmm. and this represent healing in the dream. But most of the time, snakes are not good in dreams. You know, snakes in real life, they can bite us, poison us. And so this could represent, you know, being attacked, spiritually attacked. As we know, Satan uh, transformed himself into a serpent in Genesis. And so snakes can represent a demonic force in the dream. It, some people in a dream, the snakes look different. Some Some snakes are big and some are small and different colors and then some um, don't bite and some do. So, but usually snakes in a dream are negative and it represents uh, a demonic entity. Now it could also represent a lie because they have long tails. And so snakes in dreams can represent a lie or a false uh, belief that the dreamer has. For instance, if they grew up hearing, oh, you would ne you're never going to be any good. And, you know, if they were abused, verbally abused by their parents or someone else, you know, they can have a dream 
that a snake is attacking them because this is like, this would be represent verbal abuse mm -hmm. that is attacking them. So it can represent that as well. But usually snakes and dreams are not positive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was number five, right? Spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare. So number six is direction dreams. Okay. And so direction dreams, you know, they come, God will give us direction dreams when we need guidance, spiritual guidance mm. or natural guidance in life, um, you know, direction in ministry, which way to go, things like that. And so, uh, you know, usually when you you have these type of dreams, for instance, if you're um, traveling on a road in your car and you uh, come to a fork in the road, you don't know which way to go in the dream. This could be showing that you're at a standstill in life and you don't know which direction to go in. So when you wake up from that type of dream, you would pray and ask God for direction, which direction to go in. Cause it would be crucial uh, for you to uh, go in the path that he set before you. So direction dreams, uh, God will use those to lead and guide you in the direction he wants you to go. Okay. So what's another example of a direction dream besides driving a car? Uh, well, you can have a dream uh, where you're um, in a store, for instance, I'm trying to think off the top of my head, all these dreams. And um, you're deciding, uh, you see two items in a store and you're deciding which item should I choose? Now, waking up from a dream like that, you might not quickly know that it is talking about being incons inconcisive. I think that's a word. Um, not being able to decide, not knowing whether to do what's in my right hand or do what's in my left hand. And so that could be speaking of direction in your life as well. But usually direction dreams is usually when you're going somewhere or mm. movement, movement is involved in that. And you might be going in the wrong direction. You might see a sign saying wrong way, you know, or you might, people have had dreams where they hop on a bus and to their horror, they're on the wrong bus and it's at night. And, you know, so they have to get off that bus. So they're going in the wrong direction. So God will show them that dream to show them you're going in the wrong direction you know, you, it's dark. They don't, they don't see, they can't see their way. So you would need to pray and ask God what direction. And, and a lot of times people will have dreams like that and they don't know they're going in the wrong direction. They think what they're doing in ministry or spiritually, or even naturally is the right way to go, the right way to do it. And they could be totally wrong. And God could give them a dream like that to show them you're not going in the right direction. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's good. Okay, so that was number six. That direction. was number six. So then seven would be soul dreams. And so soul dreams um, entail the mind, the will, and the emotion because the soul is made up of the mind, will, and emotion. So these type of dreams will be coming from a place of desire, you know, or your will, what you want. And so these dreams are usually black and white or colorless, or if they have color, the color is muted in these dreams. And so, for instance, you can have a dream where in real life you want a Tesla, you want a yellow Tesla. And so you're praying, oh, Lord, I want a yellow Tesla. Please bless me with this yellow Tesla. Well, in a dream, go to bed and you have a dream. And in the dream, you go to a car dealership, you walk in there in the center of the floor is your yellow Tesla. So you go up to it, somebody hands you the keys and you wake up. And so you think this is God. God is showing me that he's going to give me a yellow Tesla that is for me. Let me go to the dealership and get a yellow Tesla. But that could be coming from your desires. Oh, so, yes. And not God. Uh -huh. So if you have a dream like that, and people I've known through the years have had dreams similar to that, one particular woman sold her house thinking, because she wanted to sell her house and move, thinking God gave her the okay in a dream to sell her house, was not God at all. It was a disaster. She even was homeless for a little while. 
So, wow. <laughs> so you have to be careful. Yeah. If you, if you have a dream and you know that this is the desire of your heart, you have to pray and ask God, Lord, is this dream from you mm -hmm. or is it coming from my soul? Mm. So that's so important to decipher. And people have made uh, wrong mistakes when it comes to marriage and relationships in this area too. You know, so they will have a dream about this person and they believe in their heart. Well, I had a dream. You know, I've if I had a dollar, Jennifer, for every dream I heard of a young woman saying, I dreamt that he was my husband. <laughs> I've had 10 dreams about him. And so, you know, with that, we have to absolutely be careful. Yeah. Because many people have made shipwreck of their lives, marrying the wrong person, mm -hmm. thinking God has given me this person. But it, it, the dream is just coming from your own desires. Wow, that's mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Okay, so what about this? Because I've had this dream before, and I know other people have had this dream before, where you wake up, you're in a beautiful home, and in the dream, it's your home, but it's not really your home. You know, like the house you live in now. It's not the house you live in now, but it's a really nice house. Is that like a house in heaven? Like your home in heaven? What is that? Because I've had a few friends call me up, and they're like, is this my home in heaven where, you know, I'm in this, I know the house is mine, but it is not mine in real life. And it's gorgeous. Okay. So the house is, that's all that's in a dream. They just have a dream that they're in a house, a gorgeous house. That's, yeah. Gorgeous that's house. There. And if, yeah, it's theirs. And like, you see all the rooms and the furniture is beautiful. And they mm -hmm. wake up, they're like, Oh, dang it. Yeah, it. yeah. So, but you know, houses and it can be, it can be your house in heaven. Uh -huh. But houses and dreams, you know, they tend to you. speak of right your your yeah. life, mm -hmm. your family. Um, houses can speak of a church. It just depends on what's going on in the dream. So God could be showing that they're in a beautiful house. The house could be where God is going to beautify them. God is going to uh, 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 shine His glory upon them and make them a showcase mm. for others. Mm -hmm. So it could be speaking of that. That's yeah. good. Uh -huh. That's good. Yeah. All right. All right. So um, that was um, number eight is false or dark dreams. And so false dreams or dark dreams would come from the enemy. So uh, this would include nightmares and night terrors, these types of dreams. Um, also dreams where something negative is happening, it's happening, it's dark, you're being attacked, you know, dreams like that. And the enemy will bring dreams like that to mm -hmm. cause fear in you, or you've opened a door in some area of your life where you've given the enemy access into your dreams to attack you. So what and are some examples? Mm-hmm. Um, and many people do that. Open uh, doors. So open with examples of open doors. Yeah. So open doors can be, you know, we're we're Christians and we love Jesus and we're living for the Lord. Open doors can be looking at things on TV that don't glorify God, like horror mm -hmm. movies. Say that one again, because I know a lot of Christians who like look at horror, right? Or yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. You know, or I'm not scared. It. I'm not scared, but you know, th through those uh, movies and shows like that, you literally open a door for the enemy to come in and not only attack you or intrude into your dreams, but attack the, attack the other people in your household. Mm. The enemy will come in through those things. Yeah. So through those movies and things like that, and of course, other things, drugs and, you know, listening to music. Now there's another another one, you know, with Christians mm -hmm. listening to certain music mm -hmm. will also do that as well. Ungodly music will do that as well. And now a lot of this music, secular music, you know, a lot of these people, you know, make bargains with the devil yeah. and all this kind of stuff. And yeah. it's a lot of witchcraft involved. So, you know, when you do these things, you open up a door mm -hmm. for demons to come in and intrude into your dreams and into your family. Mm -hmm. mm. Wow. It can even go deeper because they can, if they intrude into your family line, and a lot of children have night terrors and nightmares and things like that. And if you're a Christian and your child has a night terror, now they say night terrors can 
uh, be caused by lack of sleep. You know, if you're extremely tired, you can have a night terror. But I caution Christians, if you have a little child that has night terrors, you need to treat it aggressively mm -hmm. and I mean in the spirit. That's right. You need to cast that demon out of that child and out of your home and close all doors that might have been opened up for that spirit to come in to attack your child. So we have to be so careful at, at, at you know, of the things that we do, what we see, you know, the old song, be careful little eyes what you see and what we hear, that type of thing. And um, not give room for the enemy to come in. That's right. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference between a nightmare and a night terror? Well, a nightmare is, you know, you're, you're having a dream. So you're in the dream and you're having this horrible dark dream. A night terror is kind of like what they call where you're in what they call twilight, where you're half sleep or half awake. Mm -hmm. I believe that it's a state where your body is asleep and your spirit is awake. Mm. And so um, you're aware of being attacked by demons and you can't move. You know, mm. some people used to say, oh, I can't. It's a witch riding me. You know, that's an old Southern saying. Mm -hmm. Witch mm -hmm. was riding me last night and she was sitting on me and I couldn't get up and I couldn't move and this type of thing. But it's absolutely a demonic attack and you need to be aggressive when the enemy intrudes in your dreams because we do not tolerate any demonic intrusion Amen. in our dreams at all. Not as believers. That's right. That's Do right. Not, yeah. Tolerate it. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? Lanita, she said, this, is this an example of a nightmare? Okay. My husband sees colorful grid lines when he wakes up out of his sleep. I don't know horror, but what is that? Colorful grid lines. I don't, what's what, what does what she mean? Grid lines. I don't know what grid grid line means. Lanita, what do you what do you mean yeah. by grid lines? Let's see if she responds. Because mm -hmm. I don't I don't know what the grid lines yeah. are. But yeah. Sometimes it could be like a vision issue too, I'm thinking. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I haven't heard from her yet. Okay. Okay. Right. We'll move on. But yeah, so those are dark dreams. And so um number nine is intercession dreams. And these type of dreams come to encourage the dreamer to pray. There's some issue that um, is going on, is taking place or is coming and God is encouraging you to pray. Now, these type of dreams will be where you're calling 911 on the phone. That would represent intercession. Mm. Um, you can have a dream where you're calling out for help, help, help in the dream or somebody's calling for help. Mm. That could represent intercession or prayer that's needed, you know, in whatever the situation is going on in the dream. So those type of dreams, and many people have had dreams where they're calling 911, you know, calling emergency, you know, that type of calling, you know, somebody over to help them help. Those would be intercession dreams. Mm -hmm. So what do you do when you have a dream like that? So depending on what's going on in the dream, you would pray against whatever is happening in the dream, you know, it's usually, it usually comes with a storyline okay. of what's taking place and certain people are in the dream, you know, and that type of thing. And so usually you uh, might have an idea of, of what's taking place, but if not, again, you would pray and ask God to reveal, you know, what, what do I need to pray or intercede for, mm -hmm. you know, but usually it's a person there and you need to pray and intercede for that person in the dream who's in trouble. That's good. Mm -hmm. And number 10 is a chemical or body dreams. And of course, these dreams are caused by sickness. Yeah. They can be caused by medication, alcohol, or even drugs. So, or even food. So you can have a pizza dream for real. I'm pizza really hungry right now. Oil. You are. I'm really hungry. <laughs> So you can have that type of dream, yeah. I probably so, wouldn't have fell asleep, yeah. Yeah, so, <laughs> so it can, your chemicals in your body can affect you, affect your dreams. You have crazy, weird dreams that don't make sense, don't, don't uh, 
have a rhyme nor reason and don't follow a particular pattern. So uh, these things can affect your dreams as well. So how often would you say people have chemical dreams? Because like you said, bad Chinese, bad pizza, um, drugs, you know, medicine, stuff like that. How Not often? Alcohol. Your alcohol. Well, yeah. Well, usually not a lot, but usually I've had, you know, when I was real sick in the hospital and um, I had a crazy dream. But when I woke up, I knew it was because of all the drugs they were giving me, you know, and it, it had no storyline. It didn't make it just was <laughs> just crazy. Yeah. And so I knew it was from that. But not often people, okay. you know, if okay. they don't drink or yeah. do drugs, you know, usually from drugs, alcohol and what else? Yes. All that and stuff. try to eat healthy if you can. Mind you, she eats very healthy. She lost 40 pounds and what? 50, 50. I'm sorry, 50 what? pounds. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You know what, everybody? She had a dream. Okay, so that was 10. But I want to get to what, Monica, you shared with me the other day, if you're comfortable with it. Are you comfortable with that? I am. Yes, okay. I am. Mm -hmm. She saw Jesus eating soup. And well, that, that, wasn't the life first, forever. that wasn't the first dream. That was the second dream. Okay. All right. Well, what's the, what I did Jesus see Jesus, Jesus eating soup though, <laughs> but, uh, the first dream, this, this dream was in, uh, 2020 at the height of the pandemic. It was just before the lockdown occurred. So in February of 2020, you know, I hadn't been feeling well for a while. My diet was horrible, wasn't eating good. And so I was going in for my annual checkup. Well, the night before I went in, I had a dream. And in the dream, I was in this huge church. And everybody in the church, I knew some people I knew and some I didn't, but everybody in the church was eating pizza. And so the pizza in the dream, it was dripping with cheese and oil. It just looked so greasy and good. And so everyone was eating it men and women. So all of a sudden a bell rang, went off, an alarm went off. And we all knew that when we heard that alarm, that we needed to go to the bathroom. So everybody got in the line, they put their pizzas down, got in line. But me, I refused to put my pizza down. I wouldn't let go of that pizza. I said, I'm going to eat this pizza before I go in the bathroom. And so my greedy self. So... <laughs> Uh, one of the men who was there and in real life, he is a prophet. Mm -hmm. So in the dream, he comes up to me and he says, the Lord wants me to tell you something. And I said, okay, but you know, hurry up. Cause I want to eat this pizza before. I <laughs> so he said, the Lord said, when are you going to obey? Mm -hmm. And I said, that hit me in my gut. And I knew wow. what he was talking about. He was talking about my eating habits. Yeah. And I said, I'm going to obey right now. Mm. And so it, I was going to throw the pizza away, but I took a bite of it. <laughs> before oh, before you obeyed, yeah. you just had to have one last piece. One last piece. <laughs> and he said, well, I have other things. I said, okay, well, just wait, we'll wait till I come out of the bathroom. It was hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, bathroom dreams, that represents elimination, eliminating things, negative things from your life. Oh. So we all were going in there. And, but the issue was the food. So when I woke up, I knew when I went to the doctor's office, I was going to have a negative, bad report. Sure enough, when I went there, my blood pressure was sky high. And this is in real life now. This is in real life. The next okay. day after I wake up from the dream, blood pressure sky high. Wow. And I'm like, oh Lord. So um, from that day on, I uh, stopped eating all that junk. Mm -hmm. uh, but about a week later, I was doing pretty good. A week later, I had a dream that I was sitting across the table from Jesus. Jesus was on one side of the table. He had this big bowl of soup. I had a big bowl of soup too. But the difference between the soups was that Jesus's soup had a lot of fish swimming in it. They, it was buildings in it. The fish it looked like they were going to work and coming home. I mean, it was like life. <laughs> yeah, it was like a whole Love life, fish. a whole life thing. Yeah. In the, in the soup bowl. And so it was life going on. Mm. I didn't have any of that in mind. And so I was, I was imitating, doing what I saw him do. But he spoke to me and said, eat foods that have life. Wow. Eat foods that give life. Wow. And I woke up. That's good. And so from that day on, I started eating uh, plants, 
a plant diet where now I don't eat any meat at all. I eat plants. I eat fruits and vegetables and fish order. I do not eat fish. Jesus was eating was, fish though. He ate well, fish. He, was, he wasn't eating the fish. He oh. was, which is not wrong. I mean, if you want to eat fish, you can eat fish. <laughs> Nothing wrong with eating fish. No, no, I'm like that. But let me just tell you, I was eating fish before that. I was eating salmon. Okay. But, um, you know, I just felt like when, when God told me to eat living things that have life, uh-huh. that's what I need to follow. Now he'll tell different people, different things. And so I'm not a vegan mm-hmm. at all because <laughs> okay. don't eat eggs. I eat eggs still. <laughs> yeah. Do something that was alive. Eggs. Yeah. Yeah. I don't do dairy. So, okay. but yeah, but so from that day on within two months, cause I was on medicine, he put me on medicine. And so within two months, I was off the medicine, had lost 50 pounds. How long did it take? To, to lose the pounds. Pound. Yeah. Two months wow. on plant-based diet. It wow. doesn't take long. It falls off. I wasn't even doing the exercise. Wow. So just by what I eat. And I know the Lord was showing me that this is a body-wide problem. Mm. Because that's why the ch- everybody in the church was eating this pizza, had this problem. Mm-hmm. So this is a body wine. Yeah. And this issue, and I don't mean to go off on this issue, but this issue is the problem, is the main oh. reason why so many of us mm. are dying young. Yeah. We're sick and we cannot fulfill our God-given purpose and destiny is because of what we eat. Mm. And we can't do it because we're sick. So this was a dream, not just for me, but I know it was for the body of Christ. But mm. not many people in the body of Christ want to hear that. You know, leave my fried chicken. They love their church dinners, well, I tell you. Yeah. Church dinners, you know, and that type of thing. And all that stuff, it tastes good. Yeah. But in the end, it's going to do it. Yeah. Mm. So that's what that's where I am now. And I feel great. That's so good. And healthier than I've ever been in my adult years. That is so good. Okay, Monica, so I'm going to read over okay. the 10 categories, and then we're going to open the floor for a few. Guys, keep it short. Remember I asked at the beginning, save your dreams for at the end, because we're towards the end, so Monica can answer um, your questions. She uh-huh. can't get to them all, so um, don't get offended if, if we don't get them all. But um, All right, so the top dream categories, we'll actually start with the roles. So the three <laughs> roles are... The three roles are you can be a focus, participant, or observer. All in right. The room. So y'all remember that. Write that down. Okay. All right. It's important. And mm-hmm. then the dream categories. Okay. And the dream categories. Let me open the book. So I have 10 in here. Prophetic dreams, warning dreams, destiny dreams, healing dreams, spiritual warfare, direction dreams, soul dreams, false or dark dreams, intercession dreams and chemical or body dreams. All right. Yeah. Could fall go, guys. So in my book, this is an author's copy, but this is the mysterious language of dreams journal. So in the book, wait, my head, have, is that new? So you have a journal now too. This is, no, I have a journal. Yeah, oh, okay. Book, so I have book. a journal too. Right. My so, up side by side. Could you, so everyone can see what it looks like when they order. Okay. So this one is the author's copy, but can you see it? Um, it's like going in and out. Or how about I hold up the the one that I yeah, have, right. and then you hold up the other one. Okay, so yeah. How to, okay, here we go. So this is it. And in this, okay. it's the, um, I have the categories of dreams in it. So you have your categories. And I also have prompts. In here. So when you dream, you're going to write, you're going to, uh oh, can you see it? Um, well, anyway, I you're going to yeah, write, I see the pages now with the lines. Okay. Right. You're going to write your dates. It's hard, but it has date, title, okay. category, colors, dream, and on the other side, your interpretation okay. of the dream. Okay. And so it's important, it's, it's very important to know what category your dream mm-hmm. falls into, because as you look back on your dreams, mm-hmm. you'll see that God was speaking to you uh, certain things concerning your life's purpose. Like you might see, oh, well, during this season, 
I had a lot of spiritual warfare dreams or I had a lot of warning dreams, you know, or direction dreams. Mm -hmm. So that's why I added that in. It's important for you to know the category so you'll know what season you're in in your life. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then Sandra Kelly. Yes, we will put the link in the description below. But could you tell everyone before we get to the dream interpretations, how can everyone order your book? Okay, so it's through Amazon. It's on Amazon, The Mysterious Language of Dreams, along The Mysterious Language of Dreams journal as well. And I have links on my channel. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll have all that in the description. All right, so guys, we're opening the floor to a few dreams. So let's see, guys, what do you have? Um, Sage Parsley. I had a dream about four red horses, huge like... Clyde says, uh, um, around me, and each one had a cross band, brand on them. Wow. So horses, was she in the dream? I don't know if she was in a dream or not. Sage, were you but in horses dream? in dreams usually represent um, a powerful move of God. They represent something powerful. Mm -hmm. And so the four red horses, red, you know, uh, can have a positive or a negative meaning. All colors can have a positive or negative meaning. Mm -hmm. So the red horses could um, represent, it just depends on what's going on in the dream. They could represent the anointing of God or, you know, the blood of Christ, you know. And, but she said also in the dream that it was crosses in the dream. I think she said. brand. Let's see, where is it? Uh, see. So that would represent Christianity. And Sage said she was surrounded by them. She was, oh, here it is. She said she was surrounded. I'll put it up. Oh, wow. She was surrounded by them. That sounds pretty good. Yeah, so that would represent protection. If you're surrounded by something, that yeah. would represent protection, you know, powerful, um, heavenly protection mm. that's coming her way. Wow. That sounds good. And yeah. that covers every side. That covers Sage. That covers every area of mm. your life. So in every area of your life, God is bringing protection. Also, Sage, can I say what I, I'm hearing, Jennifer? It's, it's, look, the floor is open. Let the Holy Spirit flow. Yes, because y'all know I'm a seer. <laughs> so, <laughs> what do you see? Yes. So <laughs> also, uh, Sage, um, God is um, he's bringing resources and provision for you as well. I don't know if you, you have a particular uh, business thing you want to do or ministry or whatever, but what things that he's shown you in the past, he's going to bring provision for those things as well. So you don't have to worry about how I'm going to do this, how I'm going to get this, how I'm going to get to that place and this place in life. God is bringing supernatural, heavenly provision to you. Mm, that's good. Mm -hmm. All right. We have Diana T. She said, I am, I'm assuming this is a dream, Diana. Um, I have been choked by the devil when I started learning the power of Jesus. Water waves helped me. Okay. So I assume when she says, when she learned the power of Jesus, she was, this was going on Diana, when you were a baby or a young Christian. And so a lot of times before we're saved, you know, we might be into different things and the enemy or demons think that they own us. Mm. They think they have rights into our life and that we belong to them. Mm. It can also uh, be speaking of, um, you know, um, a generational thing as well that's going on there. But choking you is trying to stifle you, mm. it's trying to uh, incite fear in you. But you said water waves washed over you. And of course, the water is the water. One of the, the meanings of water in a dream is the water of God's word. Mm -hmm. So the word of God is the thing that will break the enemy's stronghold over your life. So I don't know if you, um, she said, yes, it was a dream. Okay. So um, I don't know if you still had have this dream or it was just one time, but that, that God was showing, you know, in that dream, the enemy wants to stifle you. Mm -hmm. He wants to stop your purpose and just attack you and incite fear in you. And, and many people have those dreams, particularly when they first get saved, they have mm -hmm. dreams yeah. like that enemy is trying to stop their progress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
-hmm. All right. So let's see. Rose says she dreamt the coworker asked her to have a cell phone number to give to another person to call her. She asked me this twice and I said no both times and she got mad at me. I had a bad dream about her before. So she dreamt a coworker asked to have my cell phone number to give to another person to call her. She asked me this twice and I said no both times and she got mad at me. I had a bad dream about her. So it sounds like um it, it sounds like the coworker possibly is trying, you feel like the coworker is trying to get into your personal business or, um, you know, get into your life, yeah. you know, and that type of thing. And you don't want her in your life because she'll share your business with other people, perhaps. And so it, it seems like, but here's what I want you to do. Can I speak to you, Rose, what I just heard? <laughs> so, Rose, here's what I want you to do. This same coworker, and you dreamt this twice, the Lord wants you to pray for her. Mm. Pray for her, Rose. God has something in store for her, and he'll bless you for praying for her. You know, the Bible says that we're to pray for our enemies. That's right. So pray for her and see what happens. That's good. Okay, here's one I was looking at. Hammer of God. Hammer of God says, what does it mean when one is wearing iron shoes. Oh, wow. So that depends, Hammer of God. I, I like his, he's strong. This is a strong <laughs> person. I don't know if it's a man or a woman. Yeah. But um, iron shoes. So it depends on what's going on in the dream. Did you feel like the shoes were weighing you down? Mm. Or were you walking comfortably with the iron shoes? If you were, then this would represent a strong spiritual walk. You know, you're, you're spiritually strong. You're on a strong, solid journey. Uh, in the negative, if the iron shoes are weighing you down, it could represent a burden that's stopping you from moving forward, stopping mm. you from fulfilling your life's purpose. So it just depends. So I should have covered with that. I, covered either way okay and then there's we only have a few more um my sister had seven babies oh one boy six girls be fruitful and multiply yes. <laughs> we laid them in a row with the boy on the left and she had i'm sorry and he had no nose oh my also goodness. his name was america ender america ender Okay, did you get a bad feeling, ordinary person from this dream, I wonder? Yeah. But um, the fact that he had no nose, now noses in dreams uh, tend to represent discernment, being able mm. to discern, you know, That's you good. can discern, spiritually discern. And so um, she had seven babies, she had one boy and six girls. So the boy didn't have a nose. So this could represent maybe um, a, an, a ministry or um, a, an endeavor or something new mm -hmm. that your sister is doing. She's, she may, is, is she doing many things? It seems like it. She has all these babies <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, she called to many people. And so, but the boy is one thing that she has that has no discernment. So maybe she needs to mentor mm -hmm. and, and it says America Ender. It's like, will it end America? And so, okay, here's what the interpretation is of that right there. So having no discernment, Christians who have, have no discernment, no spiritual discernment at all, mm -hmm will cause America not to end well, mm. will cause, mm. you know, so many, so many Christians, they just don't know what's going on. Yeah. They think they do and they don't know what God is doing. And so this is why the enemy is gaining such a foothold in America, you know, in our nation with so many different issues that are going on today. And so, and it's because there is no discernment, no mm. spiritual discernment at all. Yeah. So that's what that means uh, with the little baby boy who has no nose. So we need to pray or your sister would need to pray 
uh, for discernment and look at what um, she's doing as well, because this yeah. is her baby. Mm -hmm. So it's something that she possesses or she has that she needs discernment. And you see how that could be, that's two levels right there. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. deep. Mm -hmm. Okay, China wants to know, um, she, well, she said she had a dream about witches around her bed. So usually if you have dreams about witches, these are demon spirits, mm -hmm. but they come through open doors of witchcraft. So I don't know if you, uh, people in your family line have delved into witchcraft, or if you look at shows involving witchcraft, you know, and, and, and zombies, you know, a lot of people, particularly young people look at zombies and things like that. And so you open a door to that, but, um, but witches around your bed and we, you know, sometimes demons or witches can astral project mm -hmm. into people's yep. rooms, but they feel like they have a right to do that, a legal right. And that usually comes from a family line mm -hmm. of witchcraft or somebody practicing witchcraft in the dream. So, um, you need to rebuke that dream, yeah. China, you know, and bind those spirits, those demonic spirits of witchcraft. And if you know of it in your family line, mm -hmm. you would denounce all, um, uh, practices involving witchcraft or sorcery or black mm -hmm. magic, all of that. You need mm -hmm. to denounce that and bind up the enemy. Uh, from intruding into your room or into your dreams. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's but good. Included in that. Mm -hmm. So John Her Her Hernandel asked this question. I had a dream. Two women were standing over, I guess me. Then I woke up. What does that mean? Okay. So we need to know what the women were doing and how did you feel about the women? How did they look? What did they have on? Were they scary? Were they pretty? Were they, you know, what was going on? with the women who were standing over you. I would need to know that. Yeah, let's see if he responds. I'll we'll give him a second. Okay. Let's see, John. Um, in the meantime, if he doesn't answer, I'll go for another one. Mm -hmm. um, oh my gosh. Okay, <laughs> let's see if he wrote, he didn't write. Okay, so we'll go into the next one. Let's see. Okay. Um, what about if you are in a dark room and something is standing in the doorway darker than the room? Then that's a demon spirit that's standing in the doorway. Dark is, is trying to threaten you, incite fear into you. But again, there is an open door. He feels like he has a right in your room, Monica. And so <laughs> I love your name, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, you would absolutely rebuke that dark demonic spirit and cast them out and close all doors. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how long you've been listening to us, Monica, but, you know, we talked about things that can open a door mm -hmm. to demon spirits intruding into your, your, your home and into your dreams. So that's what the dark figure in the doorway is. So would that be a warning dream mm -hmm. or a spiritual warfare dream? Well, I'm taking it as literal because she's saying, okay. what if the dark room, you're in a dark room and something is standing in the doorway darker than the room. So there it is right there. That's a demonic spirit yeah. that's intruded, you know, in your room, in your space, in your house. And so yeah. you need to cast that thing out. Yeah. 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 Okay, and then we'll do two more after Jennifer's. I like your name, Jennifer. Yeah. <laughs> I was nice. Sorry, I was inside of a house, and in the house was another house, smaller than that house that was built inside of this massive structure. Okay, so she said she was inside of a house, uh -huh. and in the house what was another, another house smaller. smaller than smaller, I guess, than that. Yeah, was built inside. Of this mess. So I'm assuming a house, it's a house within a house, mm -hmm. I'm assuming is what yeah. she's talking about. Yeah. So, you know, when you have it's kind of like that's the same thing, kind of like a dream within a dream mm -hmm. is where, you know, um, God is showing you uh, something very important to pay attention to. Now, houses, as we said earlier, in a dream can represent the person. It can represent their life. It can represent a, a church 
um, you know, a ministry. And so um, I would need to talk to her further, but a house uh, inside of a house could represent maybe there's a ministry within you inside of, because a ministry could represent your your church or mm -hmm. your um, the massive structure could represent the body of Christ. It could represent the church world and, you know, your, um, your calling or your position in the house. And so God could be showing that there's more on the inside that he wants to reveal. I don't know um, what um, she says, a house in a house, in a house. So three, so three, and you are in the inner house. I'm assuming were you in the inner house or were you just looking at this? Cause it doesn't say. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's a uh, saying that, you know, there's a the church within the church. Mm. And so a remnant, in other words, saying it's a remnant in the church, you know, just like when Jesus had 3000 people, disciples that followed him, but within that group, was the 12. And then mm -hmm. within that group was the three. Mm -hmm. So um, it could be speaking of that. I was in the inner house, right? So that would represent you. I don't know what your um, calling is in life, but um, I believe that God is showing you um, uh, that there's more on the inside than what you may know. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. John got back to us. Oh, he did. Okay. And he said the women had on night clothes and they were laughing. Oh my goodness. Not nice. Oh, these are demonic entities. Mm -hmm. John. That's a lot you of know, demonic dreams going on. A lot of here. Demonic, oh, a lot of people have demonic dreams yeah. all the time. Wow. And so, you know, I did a, a video on spiritual spouses, you know, mm. and that can uh, be what's going on here. Mm -hmm. in, in fact, in the Bible, it mentions Lilith, who is a demon yeah. spirit. Yeah. of the night. And so um, these women could be um, demonic spirits disguised as um, as women in the dream. Night clothes, a lot of times in dreams, not all the time, but many times when you're wearing night clothes in a dream or somebody's wearing a nightgown and things like that, that would represent, that tends to represent something um, sensual mm -hmm. things like this. Yeah. And, you know, what they were laughing, trying to make a mockery of you, maybe a mockery of what uh, God called you to do, you know, that type of thing. But they seem to represent demonic spirits. Mm -hmm. So you need to cast this, these women out, cast these demons out. And I don't know if they, you've had more than one dream with mm -hmm. these women, but cast them out. I once had a dream where, um, and this was the same time that I had this other dream where I woke up and I didn't wake up, but was a demonic entity standing by my bed. Mm. He was about seven, eight feet tall, maybe. Well, he hit the ceiling and he had on a black hoodie, mm -hmm. black, you know, all black robe and a black hood. And I couldn't see his face. And I woke up and I couldn't scream. I was, I thought I was screaming because my husband came into the room. I was sleeping, still sleeping. He came in the room, got something off of the dresser and I'm calling him, Nate, Nate, do you see? And he doesn't hear me, he goes out. And then I really wake up, but I, it was like no, no, no. Um, demarcation line. You know, like no. I, woke up, I woke up, I really woke up and the thing was gone. But I opened a door to that and I'm going to tell you how I did with an object. So objects can do that as well. I went to a store, this store, novelty store in Savannah, and they had this cute little doll. Everybody who knows me knows I love babies and children. So this doll was a door. It was a little, little boy and he was a hip hop little boy. And he looked so cute and he had a microphone in his hand. And you press the button and he would sing, I'm the hip hop man, I'm the hip hop man. I always got a mic in my hand. Oh, you remember that song. I remember that song. <laughs> and, and I thought it was so cute. But the next day, that night, when I had brought him in the house, that's when I, I saw that entity. Mm. And I knew, I instinctively wow. knew that that demon was connected to that object. When I looked, I still had the box. 
Mm -hmm. I looked all over the box and on the underside in small print, it had all these foul curse words mm. on the box and all these signs, demonic signs. So I knew because the demon was standing there as if I had summoned him. It was like he was saying, OK, what do you want me to do? I got that feeling. And so, and I told my husband, I said, you came in the room and you picked up such a, he said, yeah, but you were sound asleep. Mm. But I saw all that. And yeah. so objects, we have to be careful of objects that we bring in the home as well. Yeah. You know? yeah. And then that whole expose um, came about in the early uh, 2000s or, or mid 2000s about hip hop and how demonic that culture, that mm -hmm. whole world and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So the objects can do that as well. I just wanted to say that. Okay. Um, I see a lot of stuff. I'm not going to um, read these off because it just sounds like there's a lot of satanic um, dreams that people are having, nightmares yeah. like um, aliens yeah. and the closed door. bloody hearts. And stop watching all of those horror shows. Let it go. Yep. Yeah, yeah. you're so right. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. So... I don't know how to pronounce this name. It's a cool name. It looks like mm. bad band. Uh, Mariam um, dream <laughs> about a friend who is currently sick, washing clothes. And I assisted. Okay. Well, that's good. If he's currently sick and he's washing his clothes. So that washing uh, represents uh, cleanliness, purity. Um, so, and you are helping. So um, I believe that this is speaking to, you know, God, purifying whatever sickness he has, bringing a uh, healing, bringing wholeness, spiritual cleansing that will bring healing and you're assisting in it. So I don't know if your role would be to pray for him, you know, with that or encourage him with scripture as well, you know, this type of thing. So it seems like God wants to bring healing to your friend. That's a good dream. Mm, that's good. Really good dream. That's good. Yeah. All right. The last dream. Let's see. Uh, okay. How about this one? Um, this person says, this is Sylvia. She says, I keep seeing the same name over and over and over. Okay. So dreams like that, I would have to know the name. Oh, that's important. And is it a person that you know, or just some random name? So I would need to know, you know, what the name is and if you know the person okay saying. you know mm -hmm. uh -huh. so we'll give sylvia a minute to do that mm -hmm. in the meantime um mm -hmm. i just want everyone to know <coughs> excuse me that for the ball monica is actually a teacher in the workshop and mm -hmm. she is going to be teaching on dream interpretations that's day two that tuesday um after breakfast after a delicious mm -hmm. <laughs> this at the Broadmoor. Um, Monica's going to be teaching multiple classes on dream interpretations and it's going to be phenomenal. So again, if you guys could, um, I'm sorry. So if you guys, I was reading what yeah. Sylvia said. So if you guys would, um, you know, like to come to the ball, come please. It'll be great. We would love to see you. Monica's going to be teaching with a few other people uh, who've yeah. been on the show. Um, it's going to be great. Sylvia said his name is Aaron. Aaron. Okay. So that's the name of one of my sons. My baby boy is named Aaron. I love okay. that name. And so uh, Aaron, you know, Aaron in the Bible was a prophet. So um, Sylvia, it also means, I believe the name also means light bearer or light bringer. And so God could be speaking to you um, concerning revelation or the prophetic. I don't, are you a prophetic person, Sylvia? So Sylvia is probably a prophetic person. And, um, you know, God is speaking this or confirming this into her life that you would also, Sylvia, are you in ministry or do you speak in any way? Because Aaron was Moses's spokesperson yeah, yeah. as well. So God could be showing, she said, yes. Yes, yes. So I said, yes, she was prophetic. Okay, so God is um, speaking that name three times. So God is showing you that he's gonna use you and he probably already has started in the prophetic area, in the prophetic arena. So um, that's a, a great dream that you're gonna bring with your, 
uh, insights and revelation that God gives you, you're going to bring awesome. revelation and light to many. Praise Fantastic God. dream. Write that down, Sylvia. Amen. Okay, there's one more. I know I said it was the last mm -hmm. one. This is an interesting one. I haven't heard this one before. Oh, this is a lot of fun. Can we have, it is fun, right? Mm -hmm. It's only been 10 minutes for real. Okay. Yes. Let's Crystal, she says this. This is interesting. <laughs> what if you look like a different person? I'm a white woman and look like a Chinese woman with long black hair. Was trying to save a friend in the dream. Okay, so I have a video on this too. What if, you know, if you look like someone else on my channel as well. Okay. And so um, when you look like a whole different race, it could mean one of two things. It could mean that you're called to that nation. God wants you to pray and intercede wow. on behalf of that nation, um, that he's given you a burden or I, giving you um, a spiritual identity so you can identify with that, that nation. That's why you look like them. Or it could be showing, like, for instance, uh, if I have a dream that I'm a white woman or a Spanish woman in the dream, that could be a speaking of that um, God is doing a new thing in me. He's doing a new thing so much so that I won't recognize myself and other people won't recognize me either. Mm. So uh, there again, it depends on what's going on in the dream, but uh, those are usually good dreams when you have that. So you said you were a Chinese woman with long black hair, hair in a dream. Of course, I have a video on that. Hair in a dream would represent wisdom, understanding long hair, growing in wisdom, growing in understanding crystal. So uh, and you were trying to save a friend. And God is going to give you the wisdom crystal on how to do that, how to help save your friend. So um, so it could be your Chinese in the dream that you look different. I think in this dream, because your friend is in the dream. I don't know if your friend is Chinese or not, but um, just that you... you um, have a different look that God is doing something so new on the inside of you that it won't look like the uh, crystal as usual, you know, mm -hmm. you have the long black hair. So that's a great, great dream. So Monica, what do you say to those right now who are thinking, I never have dreams. I don't dream. All these people are having these dreams. They're posting it up here. Monica's interpreting them. And I don't remember any dream if, it, if I do have them. Yeah. And so a lot of people don't have dreams. Now they say, science says that we do dream mm -hmm. when we go to sleep, when we enter into REM sleep, we dream. But the, the, the problem is, is you don't remember. Mm -hmm. So in order to remember your dreams, and this worked with a friend of mine years ago, mm -hmm. if you, uh, first of all, you have to believe because, you know, a lot of Christians don't really believe that God speaks to you in dreams or they don't, they'll, or they'll say, mm -hmm. well, I'm not a dreamer. Mm -hmm. I'm not a dreamer. Yep. Just, you know, yep. God doesn't speak to me that way. Yeah. But you can. Yeah. He can speak can. to you that way. Yeah. And so, you know, so what you do is by faith, you pray and you say, Lord, I'm open to yeah. you speaking to me through dreams. Anything you want to tell me, I'm, my spirit is open. And then by an act of faith, you're going to put a, a paper and a pen next mm -hmm. to your bed as an act of faith that God is going to speak to me tonight through a dream. And when he does, you're going to write it down. I had a friend and she couldn't remember any dreams, never that she had. And I told her to do that for 10 nights straight. And I believe it was on the seventh night. She had a profound dream that spoke to the whole uh, course of her life, spoke about her, her life up until that point. And so, uh, you know, sometimes God doesn't speak because we don't expect it Yeah. and we don't want it. You know, we don't, we, we're just, you know, kind of iffy mm -hmm. about it. We don't really care. Yeah. So, uh, but that's a way that God can, uh, speak to you. You can have more dreams. And so a lot of the, the people who are on, who don't have dreams, who are listening to it because there is an anointing not so much on me, but on this teaching. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it so many times when I've done workshops and things like that, 
Well, people will come the next day and say, I had a fantastic dream, you know? And so God is absolutely, he loves us so much. He wants to talk to us. He talks to us all the time. Mm -hmm. And so he will absolutely speak to you in a dream if you want him to do so. But it takes an act of faith to do that. Amen. Amen. So good. Yeah. And um, again, Monica mm -hmm. will be uh, with us next year, April. That's about seven months away. April 1st yeah. through 3rd okay. at a night with the king at the Broadmoor Royal Boss. Someone told me stop calling it an event, but it's a gala. So <laughs> a it's gala. a gala. Okay, that's right. <laughs> it's a gala. And it's affordable to everybody. Monica's an awesome teacher, as you can see. She's very down to earth, easy to understand. Um, just a great teacher. You guys are going to love to... Um, hear her. And, um, again, tickets are only $275 per night and you only need two nights. Um, God can do it. And it's not a lot. Um, and again, it covers your food. It covers the workshops. It covers your room. Um, it covers the grounds, the pool, all that stuff. So you have a great time and they have a movie theater. Did you know that they have a movie oh, theater wow. uh, in a bowling alley? <laughs> really? It's in nice. The yeah. So if you wow. want to stay longer, stay longer. I'm sure they'll like that. But yeah, wow. it's a resort. So you guys will mm -hmm. like it. Honestly, for $275 yeah, a night. I can't do that. No. Mm -hmm. And it's very nice. And honestly, it's for God's people. They gave us great rates. Um, Monica, I, um, I want you to pray for everyone watching right now. Okay. The usual. Um, everyone who's been touched, who needs to be touched, um, who would like to dream more, uh, who mm -hmm. would like to understand more. Whatever the Lord is calling you to pray for, could you do that for us, please, right now? All right. Father God, we just thank you for this time, Lord. We thank you for this season that we're moving in. Lord, I thank you for all those who have tuned in to us tonight. Now, Lord, I ask those that you've spoken to tonight, I ask that you bring to pass the things that you've spoken in the dream. I pray, Lord, for all those under the sound of my voice for an increase in wisdom and insight and revelation in the knowledge of you. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would draw them closer to Jesus by your spirit. Lord, I pray that they would have, you would put within them a hunger and a thirst for more of you and that you would speak to them more and more and more through dreams and through visions. And Lord, I ask that you would help them to know and discover and realize their God-given purpose and their God-given destinies in Christ. Make it plain and give them clarity, Lord, so that they know what direction to go in. And Lord, we just thank you for all you've done for everybody who's listening. We thank you for all you're going to do. We thank you for the gala, Lord, that's coming in seven months and all you're going to do there. And Lord, we just give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. All yes. right. And Monica, um, so I mean, I would encourage everybody, if you can, to get both Monica's books. Um, the actual book and then her journal. So mm -hmm. when you read the book and then you begin to interpret it, you can write the dream down and write the categories and, yes. goals and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, and again, Monica, could you share where everyone can get your books? It's on Amazon. You just put in um, the mysterious language of dreams and it should come up. I also have the links um, on my, any of my videos on my channel, you, it has a link. You can just go right to it. Awesome. Awesome. And, um, someone asked at the very beginning, how can they reach out to you if they want to reach you? Okay. So if, are they talking about dreams? I think just reach so out. If they're talking. So I, I only have used that email. So if they want private dream interpretation, there um, is information under any of my videos. It would show you how to go about doing that. And um, with the email, I just would generally take um, ministry opportunities with that email. But if you want a private interpretation, you would uh, need to look under any of the videos and I give you instructions on how to do that. And where can they find your videos again? Uh, okay, so I am the biblical dream interpreter, formerly original dream girl. Yes, but I am now. Girl. 
close. Yeah. So <laughs> now I am um, the biblical dream interpreter. So you just type that in. I should come up. Awesome. Awesome sauce. I have loads and loads of videos for you to watch. She does. And they're really good. This is like you cover almost every topic. I'm, I'm like, <laughs> Monica, she just has a long list full. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's great. And again, Monica's going to teach. We're wrapping up at the two hour mark. Um, she's going to be teaching at the workshop. You want to go, you're going to want to be there in person to see her, to register for the ball. It's www.thenightwiththeking.com. And everyone, thank you so much for joining us. We love you. Yeah. These Bye, lives are really fun. Love y'all. Love y'all. All right. So yeah. So Monica blew you guys kisses. So y'all, everybody got a kiss. Good night. All right. <laughs> Have a blessed night, everyone.